Hey, hey, everybody, Z Garcia here. Today I'm taking a look at an epic wizard on wizard hate fest called Black Rose Wars. <laughs> In this game, each player represents a wizard, and that wizard is going after the Black Rose Artifact, a sentient uh, thing that is powerful, then you must possess it. And you are going to be uh, grabbing new spells, new abilities, moving around the board, blasting each other with fireballs, and bringing up on dead and all that crazy stuff, in order to get the most power points. And if you do so, you win the game. Unless the Black Rose Artifact has the most points, in which case everybody loses. Okay? So we're going to go ahead and take a look at it. I'm going to try to be brief, uh, but there's a ton. I'm, I'm really glossing over a lot here. And then I'll see you on the other side. The game is going to be played over several turns, each one broken down into a variety of phases. And it's going to be over when, at the end of one of those turns, one of these tokens, which represent the players as well as one for the Black Rose, has passed 30 over here. At that point, then, we are going to do some final scoring. Players are going to score throughout the game. But then at the end of the game, you're also going to get points, such as from uh, quests, which are these right here. From destabilizing rooms in the game, you are going to get points from trophies. And whoever has the crown, which is also the star player marker, that'll be worth one point. Uh, and then whoever has the most, of course, is going to be the winner. You will see here, and this is important for the cadence of the game, th uh, two steps here. At the beginning of the game, everybody begins with this phase of the moon. This is going to denote the uh, quests that we draw, as well as some of the events that are going to happen in one of the phases. And as soon as any one piece crosses this threshold or hits it, then we are going to switch this out with the next deck, like so. And uh, we'll do that for both decks, and then once again right here, okay? So I just want to point that out. But we're going to go ahead and talk about the different phases now, starting from the very first phase, which is the Black Rose phase. Here we are going to shift all of these events one space over. Uh, if they fall from this one, they will be discarded, and then we'll flip over a new one. The last player will do this. They are going to assign some power points, you just saw the PowerPoint track, to the Black Rose as this comes into play. There will be an event, and it might be placed into play or discarded. If it would go into a space that is highlighted uh, here, and already there is something there, that will need to be moved as well. And then these things will affect the game for as many rounds as they are in place. Some of them come into play, do something immediately, and then go away. Okay? And then we are going to go into the study phase. Before we get to the study phase, which is basically a deck building phase, okay, let's talk a little bit about these player boards. Everybody's going to have one of these with the character they are playing right here. That character is represented on the main board by a figure, by a plastic mini. And I'll show you the main board in just one bit. Around it, we've got over here a space for your deck of cards, which is called your grimoire. And then over here, your discarded cards, that's called memories. We have here your active quests, the ones you haven't completed yet. You have room for two. And then the ones you have completed. Down here, you can have up to three evocations. These are basically secondary characters that you are allowed to bring into the game. Some cards will let you do that, and they will move around on the board. They will attack various things like that. You've got your spaces for the spells. These are going to be basically programmed in uh, when we get to one of the later phases, and you'll be able to take actions. You have a quick spell here that doesn't follow this necessary order. And then up here, you've got spots for damage. These are tokens of the other player's colors that they'll give you when they damage you. And when this is fully uh, filled up, you are destroyed. Which really just means that players make points off of you and you are reset to your starting room. Okay? So, to do this uh, study phase, you are going to draw two cards from your grimoire. Put those in your hand. And then you are going to draw four from any of these decks you want. Any of these schools of magic. From those four, you are going to keep two and discard two. And you can do this however you want to. So I might, for example, draw two illusion cards. I might draw one uh, necromancy and maybe one uh, conspiracy card, okay? And then I'll take a look at all of these. These are all going to tell you what they do. Across the top is a line of banners that tell you uh, what kind of card it is. It might be an action card, maybe a trap, maybe a defense, a contingency card. They tell you who they target, how they work. And then on the other side, 
is the reverse of what the, what they call the reverse of the card. Basically an effect similar to the original one with some sort of tweak to it, okay? So you take a look at all of these and you might, uh, you know, keep, I might keep that one and I might keep that one. So those also go in my hand. I discard the other ones to their matching decks. And uh, everybody will do this uh, in turn order after the start player. Again, the start player has this crown token right here. Once the study phase is done, we are going to go on to the preparation phase, which is the, the planning phase, the programming phase. At that point, you are going to slot into these positions here between two and four cards. You have to do at least two, but you can do all of them. So I might, for example, put this card over here. This is a fire dash. It's going to let me uh, uh, run around on the board and deal some damage. I might put this one in my first one right here. And you want to put it like this so that when you flip it, whoop, the card is at the top, okay? And maybe this uh, Ice Burst, uh, that's going to be in my quick spell so that I don't have to follow this order. Maybe a Trap right here, uh, and then maybe I won't do this one. Maybe I'll hang on to it, okay? So I'll program to those. If you only do two, one will go here in the quick spell and the other one there. And then once everyone's done this, this phase, the preparation phase, is going to be order. And we uh, done, it's going to be uh, the next phase, which is the action phase, the meat of the game, really. During the action phase, the players are going to go around and around the table, taking actions until everyone is done, and then you move on to the next phase. The actions you may do are, you can do one of these two tokens to allow you to move and activate a room, or to make an attack and activate a room in either order. You could activate first and then move. So you can do one of those. You do both of them at the same time, okay? Uh, so it's one or two actions you're going to be doing. You can do one of these, you can do both. You can do one of these and a card. You can do this one or this one right now. Uh, so if I do that, I would flip this over, do its action, maybe flip this over like so, okay? You can also just do a card. If it's my next turn now, I could do this card or this one. Or I could even do two cards, as long as it's a spell, the next spell, and the quick spell. The only limitation to the two things you can do is you cannot do two spells. So I cannot do this one and this one, okay? Everything else is fine. One thing or two of them. You can also discard a card without activating it to move one step on the board. Let's go ahead and take a look at the board. Here we have the central board of the game. Each one has a unique power, and we have at the center the Black Rose room here that has no power at the beginning, but when we go into the second moon phase, it will be given one, and then players can take that action. As players are moving around the board and activating uh, these locations with the tokens I showed you, like this one here, then they are going to take the corresponding powers of these rooms. And sometimes, based on the spells they play and various things, they're going to be adding these instability tokens to the different rooms in the layout here. Whenever a player moves into a location and has the last one placed there, at the end of the turn, we are going to check the instability of all of these, and if any of them are filled, the player who has the most on there is going to keep this for some of those power points. So this is another way in which you can make some points in the game. We'll remove all these, we'll give this to the winner, and then we'll flip this tile face down, and the ability of that tile will no longer be available. The uh, the special tokens that the players are bringing into play here, the uh, evocations are also going to be moving around, damaging the players. So that's what's going on here. The players are moving, they are playing spells, they are dropping these instability tokens, you use the same ones for damage. So if you damage someone, you give some of the ones you have to other people to put on their damage track. You're going to be making points from that as well. And uh, this is going to continue some of these going away uh, until, you know, the game is basically over. I'm not going to go over all of these powers, but basically they let you do a bunch of different things. You are going to get, gain uh, power points. You are going to draw more cards. Move and punch other players. You are going to steal the crown away from whoever has it. You are going to summon various uh, baddies into the uh, onto the board here. Uh, you will draw new quests and be able to fulfill those quests. So all of that is going on here on the central board. Okay, this is, like I said, basically random with the Black Rose room in the center and the uh, throne room must be adjacent to that anywhere. The rest of them are randomized. Every player also has in the game 
their own chamber. This one right here. And that's off to the side, connected to this, but off to the side. And whenever you are knocked out, this is where you go back to and where you must leave from again in order to jump back into the fray. Now let me do a quick recap here. We've already done the Black Rose phase in which we revealed a new event and dealt with it. We did the study phase in which we uh, drafted new cards and built up our decks of cards. Then we did the preparation phase in which we programmed cards onto our own player boards. And now the action phase in which we are going to be taking one or two actions around and around the table until everybody is done moving, activating spells, attacking each other, all of that. After that, we are going to go to the evocation phase, which is very similar to the action phase, but it's basically just for these evocations to be activated and attack. So I might move this one to this player and then attack with it, okay? And they tell you right on the card how much they move and how much they attack. It's deterministic. I'm going to move that many spaces and I am going to hit that player for two. I give them two of my cubes for them to put on their damage track, okay? Then once we're done with that, we go to the cleanup phase. And during the cleanup phase, you clean up your board, you reset your tokens. We reset any of these board tokens that have been flipped face down. We bring those back up. And then we are going to check if any of the rooms are fully unstable now. And we would give out the token there and flip over the room face down, okay? Then we check if anybody has 30 power points on the score track like I showed you. If not... We go back to the beginning of a new turn with all of these phases. If someone is above 30 uh, or at 30, then the game is over and we assign a few end game points and we see who the winner is. Now, it is possible that the Black Rose, the artifact of the Black Rose itself, wins the game. I personally haven't seen that happen yet, but it's, it's possible. And it divvies out damage as well. Some of the event cards will hurt players. Various things will happen that players will have to take uh, damage cubes the black ones, which represent the black rose, okay? But, assuming somebody wins, uh, and the black rose doesn't obliterate everybody, then you've got yourself a winner, and the game will be completely over at that point. So, there you go. That's a very uh, brief overview, loosey-goosey overview of how the game works. Let's go back up top. Let me tell you what I think of it. Black Rose Wars here is a beast of a game. There are a, a, There's a ton going on in this one, and it's one that is not very easy to wrap your head around. We're going to start talking about this with the uh, things I have uh, negative opinions of, and then we'll finish strong, okay? Overall, I think this is a game that is absolutely definitively not for everybody, and it uh, hopefully, at the end of the video, you'll you know, know whether it's something you might want to check out or if it's not really your speed, okay? So let's talk about it. I'm going to start with the theme. This is basically back, uh, Black uh, Rose Wars, the generic wizarding wizard game. Okay, the theme is so generic. It's, I mean, it's a bunch of crazy wizard stuff with wizard things happening. Um, nothing feels distinct to this world. The MacGuffin is a black rose instead of, say, like a magic ring or what have you, right? That's basically it. But other than that, it's just very generic that way. Nothing in the theme is really going to help you learn the game. Um, you know, ooh, I, I damaged you. I dealt the killing blow. No, you didn't. They just reset. Oh, okay. So this is like a, like a video game wizard? setting maybe um so anyway the theme i don't think anybody maybe i mean maybe if you're a, an absolute you know nut for magic stuff and wizard stuff then yeah i mean there's a lot of it here i just thought it wasn't the specificity of it is it doesn't lead to anything so it's just not there for me and then the other thing is the ease of play Whew, this is not an easy game to internalize the general turn structure is not too bad. Again, I glossed over a lot of little steps within each of those phases. I also made these player aids with a breakdown of the turn there and then symbology and breakdown of actions and all that stuff on this side. Why this is not in the box, I will never know. They waste the back of the rule book. This is the rule book. This is the back of the rule book. I hate this. Stop it. 
Don't waste the back of the rule book when you can have something like this on there. If not, one for every player. And really, this should be available. This should be in the game. Because the game is not easy to play. It's not easy to, um, to put all together. Your first session of this, I suspect, will be a teeth-pulling endeavor. And then it hopefully will get better, assuming it hooks you and you're more interested to continue going, okay? So there you go. That's it for ease of play. Game art. Let me talk about that one, because it's kind of the middle of the road. I have a few issues with some of the ideas and concepts in the game that I think lead to a worse game art than it could have. Like programming. This is a programming game, partly. I mean, it's like a, it's a lot of things. It's a deck building game, and it's this uh, you know attacking dueling game, but it's also a programming game. And I'm not sure it needed to be a programming game, also, because that doesn't feel as strategic as maybe it should feel. Um, I think the game arc doesn't have any particularly tremendous moments where you go ha ha or anything like that uh, it's a um, it's a fairly plotting game you are you know you draft your new cards you build up your deck fairly slowly but you build up your deck and you are you know you put your cards into play and then you go around the table i move i smack you okay there's going to be a little bit of a a minor sort of bump a little climax whenever somebody's getting close to dying okay and then Things get a little bit, or as everybody t tries to target someone as they are near death, so you can bank some points that way. There's also the idea of blowing up the rooms. That's a, a good way to get some points. It's a little harder to do that than just going for other things that make you victory points, but you can do that as well. And then just the idea that the Black Rose can win. I don't like that. I'm not. The, the Black Rose in this game is essentially a game clock, okay? It makes those phases happen in case the players aren't earning uh, uh, power points themselves. It does a few things like that. But why it would ever be allowed to win, I don't understand. This is not a semi-cooperative game. That's, that's not a good idea. I don't think it has anything to do with semi-cooperation. Yet, again, the game, I guess, thinks that there are moments in which we're going to team up against the Black Rose, even though that's not really feasible so there is that with all of that ranting stuff out of the way let's talk about some things i did like okay for the most part the aesthetics here are very strong everything is high quality basically all of these tiles on the board are dual layered so the cubes stick in their little spots there you've got some dual layer activity going on on your player boards all the cards are linen finished symbology usage is fairly strong throughout uh, i like that I like the aesthetic, the general look of everything. Uh, I like, say, for example, like the, the sort of artwork on these cards I think is good. Uh, a couple of minor things I don't like. The font use on the titles of the rooms and the cards. This at the top right here. I don't know if you can see that. Don't really like that font. And then also these uh, evocations or what have you are... I know that these are minis. If you back the Kickstarter, you could get them as minis, and that's probably fine. But these are not great. They're hard to see which one matches which card. And then the little flowers that go on to them to represent which one it is for you are ridiculously tiny. These things are so small, so easy to misplace. So those two things I don't like. The replay value is high. But here's the thing about the replay value in this. Not only is it, does it have high replay value, it requires high replay value of you, the player, okay? And this is my first big warning to you. This is not a casual game by any means. There is no, no planet on which this would be considered a casual game. This is the kind of game that you're going to play the first time, like I said. Do some dentistry, and then you're going to play another ten times. And then you start to learn things like this deck is good at comboing with this deck over here. If I'm going for the strategy where I try to complete a lot of quests while also being opportunistic with damaging players, okay, that means destruction meets this other deck. Okay, and so again, by the time you've, you've played a lot, then you start to understand some of these ideas, what the different decks do, why they're broken up the way they are. So... 
it requires that investment. This is a game you want to go uh, into knowing you're going to be playing a lot of it so that you can grasp everything that's going on, okay? Lastly, we've got tactics and strategy and luck, and I think that's good, as long as you like this kind of game. There is a lot to think about. Some things, based on who you are and what you think of, you know, components or just sort of concepts of uh, game design in general, are going to be annoying to you. Like, every card is two spells, so you got to keep flipping it over to figure out what's on the other side. Until you play ten times and you kind of know what they do and you know the reverse of this one is just switches this one word for this one word. But there is a lot to think about. There are definite paths to victory. You can go attack heavy. You can go tactics heavy. I mean, um, uh, quests heavy. You can wreck the place. You can go for the Black Rose Room, which gives you these insanely powerful one-shot cards. You can uh, go for the Beasties. The, uh, what are they called? The Evocations. That's the other thing, though. The key words. Grimoire and Memories and Evocations is crazy. Uh, so you can do quite a bit of that. A combination of those things, likely. But there is definitely plenty to think about, okay? And it will be required of you to internalize and understand all of that. This is the kind of game that I could see a few people considering it their favorite game ever. Because there's so much there to dig into. And it has rough edges. I think those tend to be the kinds of games that can be unbelievably popular for a few people. And then a lot of the people who play them think they're okay. As opposed to something like Ticket to Ride that everybody thinks is pretty good. But there will be few people who I think will find it to be their favorite game ever, okay? I hope that makes sense what I'm saying. So I think that's this kind of game, but I think it's for a fairly small group of people as well. And hopefully you've understood kind of what I'm saying and, and uh, can see whether you are someone who would be uh, you know, someone who would enjoy this one. Having said all of that, though, this is a design that has some serious depth. It's been fairly carefully put together. I wish, again, that the rule book was a little stronger. Because you're going to be looking stuff up. And then that they had given me more player aids, you know, or any player aids. Things like that. But there's a, this is a, an undertaking from a design point of view. There's a lot here. It is... It's pretty well put together. So for me, overall, this is going to get a 7 out of 10, okay? I just don't feel comfortable going higher than that because because of some of the issues I had along the way. Again, then the, the, the very... The lack of welcoming in the game is fairly rough. But you get past that. You If you dig into this, all the, the magic and the feel of the game and the combat, very confrontational then I think you're going to find something here that you can get into, all right? So 7 out of 10, that is a seal of approval. I think this is a respectable game, and hopefully it's something that you're going to enjoy yourself, something that is really speaking to you, and you want to seek this one out and give it a go. Get ready for some, uh, you know, some smashing of, of wizard faces, because <laughs> that's going to happen, and uh, be ready for some repeat sessions as well. So there you go, everybody. That's going to do it for me. Again, Black Rose Wars is this one. 7 out of 10, seal of approval. My name is Z Garcia. I'm going to get out of here. See you next time.